I don't know. I think these companies are just like, we have way brighter OLED displays now. We should take advantage of them and develop That's, new technology that can take advantage of it. it but I'm like, yeah. it's fine. It feels buzzwordy. Like, it's yeah. like a feature thing at this point. And it, what are we going to oh, do with all these nits? Yeah. <laughs> got all these yeah. extra nits. Yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of The Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. And this has been a techuary. I'm just I saying it. Stop. That's true. I have to. It's <laughs> no. been so much more stuff than we stop expected. Stop trying to make fetch happen. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. No, no, but someone did suggest the name Jan U Wear, like software or hardware. Okay. Better. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought you were going to say wear because there's so many wearables, wearables, but there's not that many wearables. Yeah, the AI pin is not coming out yet. Yeah. Is that still a thing? Do people still... Is <laughs> that Vision still Pro is February 2nd, so it's not January. Yeah. So there's maybe... I don't know why I started That was a that. great intro. Anyway, we're your hosts. I'm Marquez. Weird I'm <laughs> it, I, knew I knew I said that already. I don't know why I tried to do that twice. Today, <laughs> we're doing headlines in a hat. We've done this before. Uh, you guys know how it goes. Basically, Andrew's got a hat here. It's full of a bunch of headlines, and they're all get at headlines because you somewhat. It's a hat that you oh wear. yeah, that actually. I didn't we even still need to that. make Ooh. this an actual hat. We need the headlines in a hat merch. That is a hat. Oh, oh. yeah. Okay. So a headlines in a hat hat is what you're saying. We should make yes. one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I I like that idea. But the point is, uh, lots of smaller things today, and we probably mm -hmm. have different varying lengths of things to talk about, so we'll just put them in a hat and, and go through and see what they are. I'm excited. Who wants to pick first? I'll pick first. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll pick first. <laughs> Stare Why off. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. I'm okay. just the guy who shakes that. This is one. This is gigantic. Okay. My headline in a hat. Oh, this is my favorite one. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to the viewers uh, and open. listeners, I'm... Truly apologize for what we're yeah. about to talk about. Okay, so uh, uh, Adam gonna... Adam puts it in the Slack a couple hours ago. I'm about to pass out. The Verge posted, Amy is a beautiful, simple calendar app. A-M-I-E. Now, if you know me, <laughs> you know that I have a bit of a weakness for... I think toxic trait is the correct yeah, term I'm for sure it. That's you could call it that. You know, I like. I prefer to call it like it's something I'm working on. Um <laughs> But I saw this and I'd never actually gotten to use it, or I don't think I've even heard of Amy. So I, I clicked it, and you can blame Adam for this. I immediately dived down the rabbit hole. Now the Verge article just looks like a normal article, and I'm like looking at it, reading about some of the features. It looks pretty cool, and then I click the link to go to the website, and for some reason, it's an incredibly beautiful website. <laughs> And I, I was immediately yeah. drawn in. I do have a huge weakness for websites that as soon as you click on them or or applications that when you install them, it's just like, oh, have you seen this website? Yeah. Look at this. Look at this website. I'm just going to for our video viewers, you can actually see what's going on. But there's like floating glass windows that all converge into a moving calendar. And it's to do's email and calendar all in one. Now, I will just preface this. I don't want to waste you guys time. I just want to say, like, I've tried a lot of these things and the core apps in my life are my to-do list, my calendar, and my email. And one of the biggest promises that a lot of these all-in-ones make is combining two or three of them. So a lot of times it's the calendar, or a lot of times it's the calendar and to-do list. So be able to put tasks on your calendar, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But in order to commit to one, you have to decommit from the two other apps that you were using. So whatever calendar app you were using, you don't use that anymore. Yeah. And whatever tasks app you're using, all the systems you had set up there, you don't use that anymore. You have to hope all those features are in this hybrid app. Yeah. I haven't tried Amy yet, but that's the number one thing I'm concerned about going in is I don't know if the to-do list features are going to be as robust as what I currently use with TickTick. -Tick, and I don't know if all the calendar features are going to be as robust as what I currently use with Notion Calendar. And there's an email client built in, which I can almost guarantee isn't as robust as what I do with Superhuman. So all of these things have to have some sort of extra advantage to convince me to merge them all into one place. Mm. There's also no Android app. And there's also... Cry. Uh, what? Cry. Sorry. Yeah, there's no Android app, unfortunately. And it also it's a subscription. So oh. I have to really like it. And I'm going to try it. <laughs> I feel like the day that you stop using Tick Tick is the day hell freezes over, the day the Cybertruck comes out, and the day <laughs> the Vision Pro 
becomes reality. That could be, I should probably stop using TikTok like now. No, I stopped using TikTok once every two months when I try something else. Like oh. I tried one called Routine pretty recently. I tried one and that was that was tasks and calendar, but no email. Um, and I tried another one that I'm forgetting the name of. And I try things like every six months. Like there's a lot of it's good, called called things. Yeah, things okay, is a to do sorry, list app. Sorry. Yeah, I use both Google Keep and Google Notes, and there's no organization. Google whatsoever. Notes. What is maybe? Google Notes? Oh, uh, sorry, Apple oh, no. Notes. Oh, okay. And Google Keep. I got scared. Yeah, no organizational structure. Uh, with. Alarm app? Anyone? <laughs> no. I, I use, use my clock. <laughs> I use Keep. I use Keep for yeah. taking notes during reviews. So when I'm driving a car or using a phone, yeah. as soon as I set it up, I set up a new Google Keep. Uh, note for yeah. that thing to keep rolling notes of observations as we go so that when I'm to ready to write rolling. the review, I just dump it into the doc. So no. that then the new, um, cause wasn't it in the galaxy event, there was the like, use your keep notes and it would organize them and bullet point them and everything. That, that was, was Samsung, Samsung, Samsung notes. notes. Oh, God, Which, yeah. No. So I like that feature, but I'm not trying to switch to Samsung Notes because yeah. what if the next it, phone I review isn't Samsung? Was it Samsung Notes yeah. or was it Galaxy AI? And then would that work inside of? I it was Samsung think notes. it was Samsung Notes. I'm going to assume yeah. it. Because Galaxy just trying AI to be is not like an overstructuring thing. It's just a bunch of AI features in a bunch of different apps. Yeah. Samsung yeah. Notes is the specific like OCR and like handwriting recognition and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. So yeah, I mean, you have a first, and you haven't downloaded it yet. Oh, I have. You have. Oh, you did. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. So I got it. I, I signed in. I, I I checked all the boxes. I gave it access <laughs> to my entire life. You can give it your Apple Health data. Yeah, you can give it Spotify for some and reason. And I plan Zoom. to. What? Yes. No, I, really? I immediately. I didn't even read it. I just said, yeah, I have it. All. Okay, I have a Take question. I have a question. Okay. I don't understand. What? why people don't just use Google Calendar and move on with their life. I like, mean, wh what is it about calendar apps that are better than any other calendar app? Because every screenshot I see of like every calendar app just looks like every other calendar app. I did I make use. the joke that the screenshot in here just looks like what I see Marquez using every day in that's his a, calendar app. That's but. a totally reasonable observation. Calendars fundamentally mm. all, I'm about to get, okay. Oh, I'm ready, let's go. <laughs> uh, Adam's also a freak, so any yeah, freaks Adam and I are sickos. <laughs> no, the calendars, you can only organize them visually in so many different ways, right? But it's spatially. time, you, you have a week, so you have to have seven slots for your days. Like we kind of figured out okay. how to visually, <laughs> visually organize your calendar. Sure. But then there's the actual UI for inputting and managing and moving around in that visual space. So a lot of people just put like meetings and like a couple things they need to remember, birthdays, whatever, on calendars. Mm -hmm. And that's all they put. Um, I know people who don't really even put times or locations. They just have to remember that something happens one day. They just make it an all-day event for that day. And they just know. I am not that type of person. I need to actually put the blocks out for time so that I know because I have a lot of things going on, right? So a lot of these calendar apps aren't changing visually anything at all. What they're changing is how you get about moving things, adding things, subtracting things, marking them as done, marking them as onto the next one, reallocating space, sharing available space for a meeting, like all of that stuff that comes with this calendar thing, that's what they all try to mess with. So this one having email and to-dos built in, they're trying to convince me to drag to-do list items directly onto the calendar to commit to doing it at a certain time. Oh, so Which like is, when you go oh. through your to-do list, it yeah. wants to add that to the calendar oh. and do that? Yeah. Ooh. And when you get an email, you want to commit to doing the tasks from that email at a certain time, so you drag it onto the calendar. You can drag the email onto the calendar? Yeah. Oh. Man. So that's a new concept for a lot of these hybrid apps. Because there have I, been a lot of these that have been launching recently. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah email yeah. apps or calendar apps or task apps just keep launching. Oh, yeah. And Google keeps trying to like finate, like mess with things too to try and add some of these features in it. But the other thing too is that Google is such a, like the Google Calendar app, they're not going to mess with that fundamentally. Yeah. So many people use it. Until they shut it down. Until they shut it down <laughs> eventually. Yes. Inevitably in like yeah. three years. Uh -huh. yeah. But all of these random little apps, wh when do you think Google is ever going to have an integration that shows when you listen to Spotify? Why would I care you about You won't. That? It's just fun. It's just cool. <laughs> what if I want to know how many steps I usually take on Mondays? You look at your watch. Or you could just look or at your you calendar. Check out your calendar and it'll oh my God. tell you. A little, <laughs> nice little color gradient. Stuff like that. It's yeah. one of those things right. where I'm like, I get it's just a calendar app and I kind of have that same sentiment. 
but then realize like it's the same people who say like why do you need wireless charging how long does it take to just plug your phone and it's like yeah, yeah but but if you're saving all that time and all those different times, it does add up and like it, it is convenient. So mm. maybe I just need to try it. I'm willing. So very fu- funnily, funnily, humorously, <laughs> they they just announced Notion Calendar, yeah. which just came out this last. Oh week. yeah, that was. And that was it, it's what did it used to be? It's called? just Cron. It was Cron. Yeah. So you guys just switched to that, right? It is the same app, just with a rebrand. I think they got bought by Notion. Yeah, and then we've they been just... using Cron for a while as our yeah. calendar app. So, so they just re- they repackaged does it. Does that feel better or worse than this new one that you're looking at? Um, it's like asking a car enthusiast, like, does this car feel better or worse? There are things that I like about and I'm very used to in Cron. Okay. slash notion calendar mm-hmm. but i'm willing to forgo some of those to try some new features that this one might have okay cool you know? yeah yeah i like that all right well yeah that's about all i got shout out to my fellow calendar enthusiasts calendar next goes. next headline all right oh is that could have been it i'm trying to for so audio listeners can hear us shaking <laughs> that's me shaking all right <laughs> okay i can't believe i got this headline um all right oh, so I- New Jersey. Yes. <laughs> this is a quick one. This is local New Jersey news. Um, for all our Jersey listeners For everyone out there, that knows. I, I would argue it's universal. I would argue should everyone should agree to this. Everyone should, should, should like this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, what's the headline? Okay, so I don't live in New Jersey, to be clear. However, I do go to a gym in New Jersey here because we have one mm-hmm. in the office. Uh, New Jersey just made it a law that all gyms in the state are required to have an online cancellation option. Now, yes, 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 yes. Now this is actually extremely important um, because in the United States at at least, I don't know if this is like a law in other countries, but at least in the United States, there are a lot of very cheap gyms that are like 10 to $15 a month. They have a lot of random hidden fees, like once a year you have to pay $60 for some reason and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, you can sign up online in like two seconds and they don't let, but they don't let you uh, stop your membership online. You not only have to be in the gym, but you also have to, in many cases, you have to like write a letter mm-hmm. as to why you need to cancel and like send it by parcel mail to <laughs> the headquarters. Oh, at which God. case they could just say like, we didn't even get it. Small story. When I lived in San Francisco, the day I was moving out of San Francisco, leaving, got rid of my apartment. I went to my gym to cancel and they were like, oh, uh, like the manager has to be here and he's not in today. And I was like, but I'm moving. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, is this what? So absurd. And so I ended up going back and forth with them for like four hours until they like made an exception. But it's like a horrible experience. So the fact that the yeah. New Jersey state government issued this in one state is great. I really wish Biden would go after this if he's going to go after Ticketmaster. But, you know, <laughs> just, just throwing it out there. Another big Jersey W served up fresh. Just another checkbox for the greatest state in the, in <laughs> yes. the union. Wait, Just but didn't, didn't the, the same guy say that Central Jersey doesn't exist? No, no. He put into law that Central Jersey does exist. Oh. Into law? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, not Maybe like... not law, but they changed some <laughs> oh. like new maps. That he they tweeted were about it. He yeah. tweeted about it. Yeah. Sick. Well, if you tweet about it, it's official, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's all you need. This needs to be the case all over the United States. Everyone should be able to cancel their gym membership online. Yeah. yeah. 100%. The same... Actually... I was going to say the same amount of ease of use as unsubscribing from an email newsletter, but it should be even <laughs> easier. easier, easier. Yeah. That is a pain sometimes. That's too. If you just pain. don't click five of them, it should just unsubscribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David, <laughs> can you shake that app for me? Oh, thank you. Wow. Does it affect at all which one you pick? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Pixel 8 mint and feature drops. Ooh. Oh, I That's not the it. headline. Wait, I should but bring it. They're the minting a Pixel 8 NFT? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, should an I? Air, it's, that's called an airdrop, not a feature drop. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that just reminded me of the Solana Phone Two. I'm not going to do that though. I'll two? be right back. Solana Phone Two. Did you didn't hear about this? No. Oh my god. No, please no. Dude, I'm getting tagged real? on the regular oh for pre-orders for the Solana Saga Phone Two. No way. But just, does it come with Bonk? I bet. <laughs> I bet it has lots of. Oh wow. Crypto-related benefits to those who are in those ecosystems. I'm sure. I, I don't know no anything idea. about the physical phone, by the way. Nobody has tagged <laughs> a single piece of information about the phone. The camera, is it better? Who knows? The battery, is it bigger? Nobody's mentioned that to me, but they are quick to mention that it has 40,000 pre-orders. 
and forty thousand crazy. Yeah, you can nice. pre-order now, Wait. and it ships in twenty twenty-five. And it's, it's not clear <laughs> that it's a phone. Yeah, it says Solana Chapter Two. Okay, but if you go down to the FAQ, question number four is: Is Chapter Two a phone? And they don't explicitly say yes. <laughs> oh my god! Can you guys stop sending this to me, please? <laughs> Sounds like you're going to get sent That's a lot true. more. It says, how much will this product cost? Oh, become a top refer. Oh, my God. This is why the all product sorry. will for will. Oh, it's definitely going to be an AI thing. Rabbit R2. It's definitely Rabbit's already selling be. to Solana. It says this product will f further what we set out to do with Solana Saga, which was to make crypto products and services more accessible to the public by putting Web3 securely in, in your hands. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't say it's a phone. I bet the, I, this is definitely an AI, a handheld AI. It device. is a non-refundable deposit. I'm gonna get the non-refundable four hundred and fifty dollar. I'm gonna get the Mint Pixel. I'd I'd much rather talk about the Mint Pixel. Is that already announced? This is at the bottom of their website. Is my deposit refundable? No, the, <laughs> the Mint Pixel. It, it is uh, yeah. announced. Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. The day before or, this goes live. Got it. Be right back. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm back. I bring with me a phone. Here it is. So hot. Look at that this color. Is it. It this is great. the minty, this is the mint colored Pixel 8, 8 Pro actually. Uh, we've seen this before, like mid-cycle refresh, new colors of phones. Um, this is the most OnePlus thing Google has ever done. Because it's the always, color? Yeah, the OnePlus would always, three months after the launch of the phone, oh, yeah, drop yeah. a new color yeah. just to recreate hype for it. And it's at least been it's, three months. At least it's not a T, like a Pixel 8 T. That's true. <laughs> it's, a, it's an 8 Pro with a new color. It feels so nice. It is the satin, same same Pixel really we nice. know and love, and there is a new feature drop associated with it, so there's a couple new things that Pixel is getting, um, but this is a new color. I think it looks uh, kind of like a light seafoam green type of thing. Yeah. Very toothpaste-y. That feature drop was basically everything that was announced at Samsung Unpacked. <laughs> yeah. You want to hear the list? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, actually, there's one new thing. Yeah, there is. So, yes, Circle to Search yep. is coming to the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro, mm -hmm. which is kind of the same thing. I mean, you can picture it already. You hold the gesture bar or the home button at the bottom, and then you can circle or tap whatever's on your screen. I love this feature. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy it's coming to the Pixel. The other thing is take your temperature with the Pixel 8 Pro. FDA approved. We've all been waiting for it. You remember this feature? Yeah. There's mm -hmm. a thermometer app on the Pixel 8 Pro. Yeah. <laughs> Just the 8 Pro. And it's been able to measure all kinds of things, metals, fabrics. For no reason whatever else you measure <laughs> liquids i guess um and they're adding humans to the list so I, i'm guessing it got fda approved whatever they're finally able to say that it can measure your skin temperature around your forehead mm -hmm. i don't even know what temperature i should be getting when i measure my forehead what? Uh, that's true. well no if you're doing it your internal temperature is supposed to be 90 your core temperature yeah point. so when you put but like one, when like, you do a laser like, like forehead temperature it still comes out as that correct no, I know. like when you're getting at the doctor's office i never get it's never no. super accurate and also everyone's temperature is slightly different that's also regular temperature. Yeah, yeah but so. it still should be around it's that around like 98 yeah, degrees yeah. right so i've never band. gotten so, an external measurement that high. my question is like we we kind of have determined that a lot of even smartwatches are like very bad at actually reading your temperature yeah so wasn't it the only the thing that they're mostly good for for like telling if you're sick or like the uh, the like cycle maintenance stuff is like the delta between your temperatures and if there's a extreme yes. off. So the problem is like you're not going to be taking your temperature with the pixel like every day, right? So yeah. like how are you going to know? You won't really. You'll just have to remember what you usually get. And there's probably not like Google Keep integration to keep a tab on how many times yeah. you've measured yourself. Yeah, it's probably not going to be that useful. I think we should test to see the update to see how much I'll try it. it's gotten and if it's accurate. And we could test it against a real temperature. It's kind of like when we did the pedometer short, we could do pixel versus real yeah. thermometer or something yeah. like that. Yeah, laser thermometer, core thermometer. I'll try pixel it. Pixel thermometer. Also, I got I to buy like a regular mercury thermometer. Yeah. The, uh, it does have, say a, I think I have one of my. You have a mercury there, Mario? Yeah, yeah nice. perfect. I didn't want to take a tempi. <laughs> <laughs> um, still says a forehead infrared thermometer should still be between ninety seven and ninety nine. Okay. All right. All right. I guess I just have a cool forehead. They are less accurate. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or because you just that, have no blood flow. The outside of your <laughs> You're body, very sick. like the the surface of your body, is more likely to change depending on your environment than the inside of your body. Yeah. So everyone knows someone with cold feet. 
you'd never get 98.6 measuring cold feet. got cold feet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's the headline. Mint, minty Pixel. I like it. Minty I'm Pixel. Happy about it. Wait, what else is in the feature? Job? Thermometer. Oh, yeah. There's two other ones, I think. There there's two mentioned. others. You want to hear the other two? Yeah. Photo. Photo, yeah, Photo Emoji. Mm-hmm. Photo Emoji uh, allows you to transform your favorite photos into reactions with the help of on device Google AI. That's epic. Bad naming, though. Photo Emoji makes it sound like it's going to do like Animoji yeah. or stuff like that, but or, I do like it. Is this something you can use like in um, messages, Google Messages? <laughs> that's what I I'm, imagine that's the primary like use. Like reactions yeah. or emoji? I think it's going to be an emoji oh. that moves in the message. It moves? Yeah. Like. Yeah, there was stickers. stickers. Yeah, stickers, which every phone seems to make a big deal about dropping as a feature, and I never use them. So yeah. I'm not even. Samsung wanting... just did that too. Yeah, Samsung just did it. And okay. Apple's already done it. Mm-hmm. A message, yeah. I, I, my, okay. So uh, my good friend Omar, shout out Omar if you're listening to this, shout out is Omar. a uh, he. He's a visual artist. He mostly works with. Uh, he does a lot of different things, but he does a lot with pencil and paper. And he was showing me that for his work, he uses the sticker function. Um, to uh, sca- take like scan his sketches because he can get them on a transparent background oh. effectively, and then because it saves to a cloud bank in the messages when he he does it on his phone like when he's on the subway sketching, and then he opens his iPad and can take all of his new stickers straight to Procreate to collage them, and yeah. I was like, cool. And the cutouts are really good because it's just pencil on paper. I can get the edges perfectly. Yeah. And it's, it t- tends to be a pretty good cutout. That is like yeah, the yeah. perfect exact use case I would expect to see in an Apple commercial. And I'd be like, I know. I had no idea <laughs> that was a thing people did, but that's perfect for that. I know. it's all, And it syncs across devices. It's yeah. just like yeah. using Final Cut on the iPad on the train. Yeah. Which people totally do. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the last thing is Magic Compose. Powered by Google's generative AI technology, Magic Compose crafts stylized, suggested responses with the context of your messages. So it'll write texts back to your friends. For so you. this is the same as the Gmail auto reply. I mean, sure. text messages already have auto reply in them. As but this one will things. have the context of the whole conversation, maybe how you talk already. So instead of I'm on my way, it's see you in a minute, big dog. <laughs> something i don't know i mean i would just like it to just say like yes or okay instead of the like sure thumbs up that like yeah. everyone i accidentally click yeah. on when like i'm trying to like, like, respond <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah we'll try it all well let's try it all i'm excited let's take a break we got a bunch more stuff in the hat i'm looking at it over there it's still teeming That's with true. exciting headlines so we'll get back to headlines in a hat but before we take a break trivia Trivia in a hat. In a hat. <laughs> Trivia in a hat. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a cat in a hat, like remix. First question. Mm. USB OTG. Yep. The OTG stands for what? That's right. I've never even heard of USB OTG. When I plug my phone in. What? USB OTG. You've definitely heard of USB OTG. I know that, but I don't know that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know that standard, but I don't actually know the answer. I can picture exactly where it shows up on my phone. I'm just trying to remember what it stands for. Adam would like it to stand for over the garden wall. I wish. Oh, man. If every USB device had an over the garden wall, like, (laughs) option. Can I propose something? Yes. Over the garden wall? This is not multiple choice, right? Uh A ring? Not multiple choice. Near the rat hole? OTG is three letters. (laughs) It is. Can we get one point per letter? Available. And you have to get all three of them right. (laughs) (laughs) Several. One or two. If I get one of the letters right, I'd be happy to get a point. No. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. Well, I tried. I tried. We'll be right back. All right. This episode is brought to you by Visible Wireless. Okay, so Visible Wireless is one of our partners and they're pretty great. They asked me to talk about why Visible might not be interesting for you. Pretty refreshing, right? So Visible's base plan with unlimited 5G data on Verizon's network for 25 bucks a month works great for lots of people. So what's not to love? Well, they're all digital. So you do everything from managing your plan to getting customer service right in their app. So if you love to handle everything without ever needing to talk to a human in a store, Visible's great. 
But if you need a shop for a new phone in person, Visible probably isn't for you. Someone like Verizon might be a better choice. If you want your wireless bundled with a bunch of extra stuff, don't switch to Visible. But heads up, you're gonna have to pay for that extra stuff. Visible is focused on the wireless part of wireless. So if you want more than unlimited 5G data from your wireless plan and to pay top dollar for it, then by all means, don't switch to Visible. Don't even go to visible.com to learn more. You get it. Rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see visible.com. Welcome back. We're taking it back now, y'all. Two hops this time. This time it's Andrew's turn to pick. Oh, wait. twice in a row? Oh, sorry. Oh, it's, it's like a Andrew's snake turn. draft. Wait, is it your turn? It oh, it is your turn. Snake draft? You go one, two, three, three, two, one. Sure, let's do that. If you or want. what if Adam and Ellis want to pull one out? Do you want to pull one out? I'm cool. Okay. All right. Well, snake right. draft we'll it is. Snake, snake draft. draft. Disney AR VR walking floor. Oh, I saw this. Yeah, may, that's not quite the headline. And maybe as a headline, that's like our tech version of the headline. But there's a video from the Disney Imagineering uh, department. Department, thank you. <laughs> um, I don't know what that's actually <laughs> called. Um, and they created this like really cool holodeck. floor. What's hollow deck? Hollow deck floor. Hollow deck floor. And yeah. like, I'm sure you've all seen where VR. Can we all agree that the most, the thing that breaks immersion the most in VR games is walking? Okay, I have, I can see where you're going with this. Okay. And I, I know exactly what I want to say. Go ahead. Say now, or you want me to <laughs> no, keep going? I can. I feel like I know where you're going. Okay, so like the old, the old walking things that I've seen, and maybe there's some other ones, but it's kind of like you're slipping. You either need to teleport or you need to use your controller. Exactly. Then or, there was the one yeah. where you're kind of like it's called like omni floor or is something. It, yeah, it's basically a, a like dome floor and you have like you slippery, slippery things on your shoes, shoes and you're like in a thing and you're And like you're walking running. it like pulls you back into the middle. Yeah. This is like a bunch of tiles that somehow they I like, couldn't Yeah. They like change direction by how you're walking and then you are walking you without walk going in place. anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And it can like kind of move you around. It's yeah. for a bunch of other things as well. Yeah. Um but it looks like potentially one of the coolest ways to walk in VR. It's kind of yeah. a cool video. They have like, there's this guy that works for Disney Research that's been working there for a very long time. Lanny and he's Smoots, just an inventor. A legend. What's his name? Lanny Smoot. <laughs> yeah. That's a great name. Yeah. Um, he plays saxophone. He also invented that realistic lightsaber that Disney oh, recently really? has been touting. The Verge just did an article on that yeah. today, I think, actually. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a telescoping lightsaber that looks very realistic that's awesome. and comes out slowly and stuff. Uh, but this hollow floor looks very Holodeck, interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I have two different size, compl not complaints, just question marks about it. Okay. 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 One is, you remember, you were talking about the thing where you're like kind of, there's something around your waist yeah. and you can walk or run. Yeah. It feels like in a game, if all you can do is walk, there's got to be some point in the game where you want to run or go a little faster, and I just wonder what happens on the surface. I don't really know. Yeah. They did some cool, uh, some really cool, interesting things where he's like on a chair sliding around. Yeah. There's like all kinds of other things. I think that's really cool, and the tech is very impressive. But the other thing about VR and moving around, which makes some of these um, movement mechanics so difficult, is you also want to sync the environment movement with your actual inner ear feeling of movement. Yeah. So the you reason why like... teleport works so well is because you just point at a spot on the ground and you snap there. And at no point do you feel the environment moving while you're not actually moving. Right. Because the second you do that and you see movement, it but you don't feel you movement, you're, it just, that's how like the nauseating mm, feeling yeah. happens. Mm -hmm. And with this, it's like super cool that you're actually walking and you'll see movement walking in the environment, but your inner ear will still not feel walking because you're not moving. So the, but the you are kind forward. Of. Is like, that? If you're running on a treadmill, know, you don't get like ill. Well, that's because you can see that you're not moving. Oh. So you can see that you're not moving on a treadmill and your oh. legs are fine, but you can feel that you're not moving and you can see it so it matches. Hmm. In the VR headset, you're walking and you can feel that you're not moving in your inner ear. But you see that you are moving, so you still will feel. But how is this different from like the dome thing where you're like running? Because in VR, you're still moving forward. That will also be extremely nauseating. Have you used that? No, but I guarantee you'll feel the same difference. Hmm. Really? Yeah. I've used it before in that dome thing, and it was not pleasant. I think that's just because the dome thing wasn't good. That's also true because it was at like <laughs> that's CES the, or something. That's the fundamental reason why it feels like motion sickness. Like in the games in VR where you're sitting in a chair, but you're moving through an environment, that also tweaks your balance because you see that you're moving, but you feel that you're not. That's why it gives you motion sickness. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't, 
change that, but it's still cool that you are like moving your legs, which I think is awesome. Yeah. We're gonna have to put it to the test and go to, I need to Disney see this. and <clears throat> yeah. This might be a good reason why a lot of AR games are more fun to move around than VR games. Can we just change our whole studio floor to this so I don't have to walk? <laughs> so just it can just slide me across. No matter how hard you run, you don't <laughs> go anywhere. That's... No, or the opposite. It can also just send you places. Like oh, he's sure. using it as different examples too of like I could see them using this in a show or something. Like one guy's pretending to move an Apple box around the floor and it's moving the Apple box around the floor. I'm still don't know what these tiles are exactly. Yeah, they don't really explain it at all. <laughs> it's it's Disney. It's kind man. of wild. Like it, it kind of like slope in different directions. And yeah. in this, two people can be moving in opposite directions, which is wild. Um, it's interesting. I have seen like this omnidirectional treadmill before that it detects like the direction that you're walking and it moves you the mm -hmm. opposite direction and it can go every every way yeah and that sort of works the same way um so this tile based thing seems kind of weird maybe it's just because it's more modular it looks like if you look really closely but, it's like individual spinning disc yeah i was like gonna say it's like you're running on a log they like yeah. rotate also yeah or like so they tilt. all spin in certain directions that you feel the motion or it pushes you in a certain the motion direction. The i'm interested also like how hard you like how fast you can walk or if there's a certain like i'm now walking in the too video fast they're all this. walking really yeah slowly. it's a very so. specific walk but it's still a cool it's tech cool. though i wanted yeah. to I, I hope they keep working on it because I, I do feel like that would be cool for it to like work really well on a large floor mm -hmm. that'd be kind of sick yeah i think the reason a lot of people are saying this is like the next step towards the hollow deck which for people that don't know in star trek there's like a room you can go in that <laughs> that's what everyone basically okay. comp like it's it uses ar but like projections and also like everything basically just turns into the simulation of what you want it to be and there's whole plot lines of like don't get too lost in the hollow deck. You have to remember that it's fake and it's not real life because people can get lost in there forever and they'll have the perfect world and they don't want to go back to reality. Mm -hmm. It's a very early conception of like, don't get lost in VR. Your your brain will rot away. Hmm. Um, and that real life is a little more sad than the perfect VR world, but you have to deal with it. But what if we're already in the VR world? Possible. Oh, That's a great Simulation point. theory. But... <laughs> But a lot of people are saying this is like the next step in it because theoretically, if you had like a lightweight, like AR VR headset and you could go into a room that had all these tiles around it and you could walk around, like you could be on a mountain field, you could be whatever, you could be walking around and you just have no idea. So it's just like simulating anything for your brain, which is Got it. always fun. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Simulation. I think this would be cool. I'm excited for when VR, despite your ear thing you're talking about can walk i'm convinced it's going to be more like what you said andrew i think the this is going to get used mostly in like shows and like yeah he wasn't like, talking about it just ar yeah. vr i threw it in here because i do think that's cool and we're talking about ar and vr a lot and mm -hmm. i guess mostly vr less ar yeah um but it stinks when there's a really cool vr game and then the walking just completely takes you out yeah of it. you know what i think this is going to be great for uh -oh. all right <laughs> No offense, I love your dog, Adam. Oh, but no. picture this. <laughs> it's Tiring like out your dog. 15 degrees outside. Yeah. You don't want to take your dog for a walk. That sucks. Slap these goggles on your dumb dog. <laughs> throw them on this thing. <laughs> they can have the best walk of their life. Do or you just remember? Something have you seen the vans? These pe there's these like vans <laughs> that come around to people's house and they have like a dog treadmill in it. Oh, yeah, and yeah, they yeah, put them that. on like a collar. I love those. And they just <laughs> Sprint. It's crazy how People fast they're pay going. So much money. It's awesome. Not have to do the thing that they signed up to do. Okay. Niche. Next headline that I just picked out of the hat. I didn't shake it. I'm sorry. Um, Pixel 9 renders are already leaking. That was fast. Yeah. I want to note that it's January. <laughs> I also want to note that we're not surprised. Um, oh only nine months away. You could have an entire child in the time that it's going to be before <laughs> this product is supposed to come out. So if you want to have a baby at the same time the Pixel 9 is launching, do it right now. Yeah. Um, so there are renders of the Pixel 9 Pro. How that do we have feel about this? Allegedly. But yeah. Allegedly. Alleged renders by OnLinks and MySmartPrice, as usual, as is tradition <laughs> yeah, around as here. Tradition. I don't know what year it is because <laughs> the same thing happens every year. Um, but they are very weird looking. It's a, it, it's a, like the trend now is to make the front and the sides of everything look exactly like an iPhone. Flat, flat front, flat sides, metal rails. 
But the camera bump, once again, looks even weirder than last year. It once is again. different because it's not sloped into the rails, yeah. according to this. That's my least favorite thing. Is the it? camera bump? Yeah. I weirdly kind of dig it. It's I... a static island. <laughs> <laughs> Part of what makes the Pixel's visor feel intentional yeah. And even they did it, I think, even better in previous pixels, but it, it's literally because it feels like it's part of the mm. the Well in the in the Pixel Six it was two different components. Right. Which is what made it look like it's something they just went it to the like bolted and on together, yeah. But when they when they got it all as one piece, it looks so like it looks like a good design. It looks like this is the way it was supposed one to be. A single piece of aluminium. Yeah. And like it's one big frame, and I like that. And I feel like this is backwards, this new render. If you're on the video version, you can see this new render. It looks like, again, it's back to something bolted onto the back of a flat phone. Yeah. Which is, I think that's why I don't like For it. For audio listeners, if you've ever seen a Xiaomi Mi Band, uh, the Mi Band is like this little module that gets put in this little rubber band that you put around your, your wrist. It looks like the display of a Xiaomi Mi Band that's just bolted to the back of a phone. Oh, yeah. Maybe we should describe it with something... <laughs> not something it looks more. like among <laughs> us it, it looks like among us there that's it, it. that's the yeah, end of the story year, okay the last one was like a robocop among us collab <laughs> this one they've just committed to the bit yeah um, it does have a giant camera they're definitely still going for the visor vibe of it stretching across the whole back of the screen but just imagine it's in an oval instead of rolling over onto right. the side rails now big right. pill yeah big very but like very cut and dry it's not rolling into the back it is a very hard 90 degree angle from yeah. the camera bump popping the amount out of, of it. dust that's going to collect around <laughs> this ring is crazy they were like we don't have enough dust on the top and the bottom <laughs> let's put it on the sides it's too crazy yeah, yeah. so yeah. otherwise it's an iphone um <laughs> hole punch cut out why is 2024 the year where everyone is making the iPhone i like this samsung's flat rails rule i'm happy they, they do I, I agree like i like the feeling of flat rails it's just it's kind of weird that they're all so similar i guess i think it's less weird that like they are similar to the apple thing and just weird that <clears throat> samsung and google seems to be doing this in the same year yeah yeah. Like people like phones are making the switch all at the same time. Yeah. Which feels And it's not just them, weird. it's other manufacturers too. Are there as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But I think that the Pixel 8 Pro was the best looking Pixel since the Pixel 6, since they have big redesign, like by far. It looks the most like put together and like single like Sorry. pieced I'm going, body. I'm going a little bit back against the rails. The I best Pixel, Pixel 2. Pixel s well, I, said, I said since, since Pixel 6. Since the new... Oh, okay, since so the new reason. Okay, sorry, eight, sorry. I think 8 by far looks the best. Yeah. But... I have a thing for the, the 6 visor, even though it was clearly not, not as well integrated as the current one. Yeah. I think it's because it's glass instead of metal. That's oh, because the whole thing is glass. It yeah. doesn't have the like, cutouts inside of the I think that's why glass. I liked it. Actually, this, though, kind of almost feels that vibe because all the cameras are in one singular piece of glass where the... 7 Pro is yeah. two openings, right? It's like an yeah. oval and a circle. Mm -hmm. So this is like one large oval and then you just have the flash and IR sensor on the... Like the eight. What is that? The thermometer. The thermometer. <laughs> the thermometer. So is this still the thermometer in this? Possibly. Nice. Yeah, possibly. Google yeah. Pixel 9 Pro thermometer confirmed. Well, I don't know if that's Heard it here first. We won't know. know if that's what that It could be anything. It could be laser autofocus. This is also be whatever we want. away. Yeah. Very much. <laughs> oh, like, don't worry. It'll be, well, it'll be on sale in like two, two weeks. You'll like <laughs> find it in a Best Buy that's somewhere. That's true. Flat rails, flat screen. Anyway, this is super early. Uh, we will confirm over the next nine months whether or not this is correct and get back to you on that. I'm <laughs> way more excited for Tensor to get better than for the design of the phone. Well, that's going to take two more generations before yep. they switch to TSMC. All right. Let's get to our second to last headline. In Top that. of the snake draft. Oh, could be anything. Mark has just turned around and looked directly at me while pulling out this thing, and it was mildly threatening. <laughs> it says... S24 uploads HDR photos. Oh, no. What do and you mean, does? oh, no? Okay. Oh, I didn't put the... Have didn't you ever it. been on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> I have. And then your eyes get burned to smithereens HDR, because somebody baby. uploaded a iPhone video that has HDR on it? Photos. 
You're just scrolling late at night, you're under your covers, you're at minimum brightness, and then BAM! <laughs> That's exactly how it feels. That's ex- the difference you just like heard a fire audio <laughs> is exactly how it feels to your eyes. Yeah. That's a that's a thing. So currently, uh, before the S twenty four, there was no HDR photo support on Instagram, only HDR video, and that was really only enabled through iPhones, I believe. Yeah. But now with Pixel Ultra HDR, and because Pixel Ultra HDR is like a standard, and Samsung's like kind of making it's like based on the standard, these are basically Ultra HDR photos, and now Instagram's supporting it. Um, so now you can be ambushed by photos. <laughs> yeah, while you're in low brightness mode. It's just mode. not. It, this is a hot take, possibly, but like I don't think it's a good experience to be ambiently scrolling at one brightness and then not being able to control when everything just gets suddenly brighter. It is weird, and I agree. And I think we probably need to have some sort of way for the for the for the phone to tell if you're in low brightness mode. Don't show me the huge dynamic range of this HDR photo show me an SDR version I think it should by default show SDR and then there should be a view HDR button why have that, I never experienced no one would ever this. press good but <laughs> but you've never you never experienced this no like you've never been in like super dim lighting in on your phone and then gotten to a video that just blasts the mm. brightness I don't think but so. it's not even it, it's not even necessarily blasting the brightness so so HDR like ultra HDR on pixel it's just adding an additional tone map to the mm-hmm. JPEG uh, to the 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 JPEG, yeah. um, because JPEGs usually get rid of a lot of the luminance data, so or the, sorry the chrominance data, and then they add this like tone map on top, so it's the same JPEG but with but with a luminance map just like slapped on top, and so so some parts of it are super bright the highlights and stuff are just way brighter than usual okay yeah. if you okay look we're i guess just, i've just never had like a or maybe i just don't scroll in the like dark as this is an that. hdr video can you see how like the rest of the ui looks just kind of like grayed out and darker yeah i can see it actually the yeah so the ui is not grayed out and darker but the video is just way brighter okay so, look they're a yeah, small team okay you gotta <laughs> give up cut <laughs> them no, this is leaner than you think this is yeah. their fault this is google's fault this is this is apple's fault i just for some reason they've just decided that ultra hdr is something that people want even adobe is uh you can now edit ultra hdr photos in lightroom and photoshop and it's like i don't want to have to edit an image for sdr and hdr like it's going to double my my editing time if i have to make sure that it looks good in both Mm. modes yeah and there was nothing wrong with sdr in the first place this is hdr is better it's not (laughs) sometimes this is actually a lot of this talk is the same reason why i don't we don't upload hdr videos to youtube is because it only looks good if the person watching it is ready for HDR, is watching high brightness HDR content, has an HDR monitor, and like watches it in HDR. Yeah. In a lot of the other situations, that file will look worse yeah. if they don't have the right monitor or if they aren't in an HDR ready environment or if they're in a dim environment, whatever, it just looks worse. Yeah. So I just don't bother with it yet. I try to look make really good looking SDR content that is more compatible everywhere. Yeah. And I was just saying the same thing on in your gallery. You can be swiping through a bunch of SDR content and then swipe over to an HDR video and the screen just goes bam. Like that's <laughs> you're here we are, so HDR annoying. again. That that experience of going back and forth, we kind of just have to get to a point where HDR is everything all the time. But it won't be for so But if we're not there, it's always gonna be back and forth and that's tough. Yeah. It's, it's like, like dedicated cars. cameras are not going to there's a there's a button now in Lightroom and Photoshop that transforms SDR photos into HDR mm-hmm. photos. Mm-hmm. Um but I don't like it. That seems so, tough. So yeah, it's it's a processing thing. It can just yeah. it just like takes the highlight details and like brightens them up and adds a tone map on top. But I don't I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Personally, I'm just like I don't want to edit for two different types of displays all the time. So I'm a little old school SDR guy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Get yeah, with the times. I yeah. personally Boomer. Get, man. <laughs> I don't know. I think these companies are just like, we have way brighter OLED displays now. We should take advantage of them and develop That's, new technology that can take advantage of it. it but I'm like, yeah. it's fine. It feels buzzwordy. Like it's yeah. like a feature thing at this point. And it, what are we gonna oh, do with all these nits? Yeah. <laughs> we got all yeah. these extra nits. Yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, now they yeah. know. Instagram at HDR photos. Yeah. So only on Galaxy right now is that yeah. true okay yeah 
Interesting. Well, only uploaded from Galaxy, but they will assault your eyes everywhere. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. You all get to yeah. reap the benefits. I love yeah. it. All right. all right. We should take a quick break. We've got another headline in the hat, but before we get to that headline and the break, trivia. Trivia. All right, so the world of storage mediums is a world full of acronyms. We're familiar with the hits. We know RAM. Oh, yeah. We know Random w- Access Memories. We know that was an album. And an acronym. It is. Yeah. Uh, well played. <laughs> it's a good. It's we a know good. ROM. Random. Nope. <laughs> but. <laughs> what is ROM? Read only what? memory. That's what it is. <laughs> what is the acronym for a storage that can be written a single time by a user and cannot be rewritten ever again? Oh. Pen and paper. A Scantron is an example of this kind of memory, actually. I think I know this. Perhaps just by you guessing. Do. There's an acronym? There is an acronym. There's an acronym for everything. Naturally. There's an acronym for David. Just like D. Best resolution audio video integrated architecture. Yikes. Bravia. Bravia. Thanks, Sony. <laughs> oh, Sony. Um, All right. Wow, yeah, you know I'm what I love about, about this trivia question? How it just raised the energy in the room so <laughs> high. <laughs> we all started thinking, just like the people yeah, in our acronyms. Cars, oh, right? I just gave up dishes. immediately. Yeah, acronyms are a lot of thinking. I don't know. This is a this is a good one. Somebody, everyone, everyone washing the dishes just like stopped washing. Wait, the dishes. here's a question: Do we need <laughs> to know thinking. just the acronym, or do we need to know what it stands for? Uh, I was looking for the acronym, but why don't we throw a bonus point in there? Oh. If you bonus can, point? Uh, no, I'm just more sur- okay. <laughs> Can we know how many letters the acronym is? So s- some of us can no, guess. Maybe on. if some of the people here don't know what it is, they can just guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fair. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's clear no one knows what it is. Okay, we'll be right back. Fair. It'll be a learning experience. We'll be, we'll be back. All right, welcome back. To the snake draft. Snake draft. I was the last one to go, but that means I go again because it's because it's a snake draft. Top of the order. Oh, you're right. Because it's cause <laughs> what, like a snake. <laughs> that was bad. Okay. Yes. All right. We got two headlines left. This one. Oh. This one says Rolls Royce. Spectre. We're being pretty creative with the term <laughs> headline, but we're just writing down things we like on a piece this of paper. Not a headline. This one's not a headline. Chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> No, we reviewed the Rolls Royce, the electric Rolls Royce, and that thing is insane. Can we all go around and say our favorite part about it? Yes. Okay. okay. Perfect. Can I start? Wait, let's just let me just start with the fundamentals of what it is. Okay. okay. So it's the Rolls Royce Spectre. Uh, if you haven't heard of the Rolls Royce Spectre, picture a Rolls Royce, a gigantic two door coupe with a back seat. It is fully electric, it gets 260 miles of range, it's got about 550 horsepower and 600 pound feet of torque. It has all of the Rolls Royce stuff, the stars in the ceiling, the umbrella in the door, and it's $400,000. Go. You said gigantic coupe? Yes. That is, people need to understand that because, it's a boat. yes, it is a coupe, but that thing yeah. is humongous. It's, a boat. it's also really weird and awkward because the doors open backwards. Suicide like, doors. Yeah, they're suicide doors. They open like, whoop, and then you have to like climb into the back if you're in the back seat. Yeah. But it's a full-size back seat. Mm-hmm. It's big, yeah. So it's weird. It's like it's like usually those back seats are very cramped, but mm-hmm. it's not. Just for context, yeah. The Rivian R1T is 217 inches long. That is a pickup truck with a four foot bed. Yeah. The Rolls Royce Spectre is 216 inches long. So it's basically the same size as a pickup truck. Jesus. From front to back. Okay. Wow. So now that the fundamentals are out of the way, it's electric. It's a luxury sedan. It's Coupe. Electric? Sorry. What did you like about it? I liked that we went to Wawa in it. <laughs> Same. You can put the photo in uh-huh. there, Adam. Um, that was about it. <laughs> if that was people. all you liked no, about okay. it? Okay, I like. Okay, there were it LEDs. It was purple. It was purple. <laughs> that was, was. cool. In t- on the interior, there is these like little twinkling LEDs that are all over it. Even though that probably cost them like fifteen cents, it was still very pretty. I hear it's pretty pricey. The LEDs? Yeah, the I ceiling. think everything in that car is pr- yeah. pretty pricey. I mean, they're nice. Yeah, they're nice. LEDs. They the, were high refresh rate LEDs, too, because they didn't flicker. They didn't when flicker you with video, video, which is important. It's the details. Uh, are they LEDs or are they... Mm, is this a dumb question? Or are they fiber sorry, optics? I, was, uh, I, I don't think they were... F- that's an interesting point. But a what fiber optic would still sense? have an LED in the back. What oh, I true, thought yeah. they could have been is sometimes 
at people LED folk nowadays will put a phosphor layer LED on the folk. inside of the bulb so that the elect or the photons flying off the LED excite this phosphor layer and produce a more natural oh, glow. glow. I don't know if they did that. But it was I don't think they did that. I don't think they did either. But okay. the thought crossed my brain. <laughs> That's great. I think the um the heating of the seats was better than the heating of any other seat that I have heated before. Nice. Yeah. That's actually a really That's good solid. feature I for hope, a luxury yeah. vehicle. It felt nice. Yeah. Okay. What did you like? What did you like about it? I don't know if the <laughs> carpet is the correct term for oh, it. Oh, the Yo. carpet. Yo. It's carpet. like two oh, yeah, inch thick plush. plush like, <laughs> I felt so bad getting in the, it, from the snow getting <laughs> yeah, in Yeah, there's there. snow and salt. Wait, and I was like, if you feel the same way after hearing lamb's wool. It was lamb's I wool. I knew it. Was it? I was like, I, this Yo. feels like some animal kind it, of fur. Oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I feel That's worse about it, but yeah. it, feel worse, it yeah. was so soft. Made no sense of being the place where I put my feet after walking in the snow. Although I'm sure they weren't happy that we were all walking in the snow and then no, going into it. Wash it. Uh, but yeah, it was way too plush to just be the car's flooring. It was pretty Beautiful. solid. Front and yeah. back had that carpet. Yeah. Yeah. So you like the lamb's wool. Mm -hmm. What did you like, Marcus? So you use the word soft to describe that carpet. I use the word soft to describe everything about that car. Okay. <laughs> the suspension was very soft. The oh. steering was very soft. Mm. But most interestingly, the throttle response and braking are very, very gradual and soft. Mm. So in, a, in your Model 3, if you stamp the accelerator pedal, mm. it'll throw your head back. Yeah. And you'll get like a jolt forward. If you stamp the accelerator pedal in this car, it will flow forward. It will not throw your head back. And the regenerative braking, which is okay. one pedal braking as well, when you let your foot off the, the accelerator and it starts to slow down, it does this really smooth, that smooth, sounds awesome. smooth stop to zero. Yeah. That would be nice. I did really notice when smooth. we were driving on it, the New Jersey roads, um, they should you know address that after the gym stuff, but the New Jersey roads are notoriously potholy and very mm. bumpy. It did kind of feel like we were just drifting. You know, on twenty-three inch wheels, it made you feel like you're on a cloud. I don't it's know crazy. the difference, but well, I would it's say it's very impressive. That's when impressive. you said it slows up and slows down, mm -hmm. you said punch the accelerator, mm -hmm. won't shoot you forward. I thought you were gonna be like slam the brakes, nice smooth, oh. <laughs> no, no, no. nice smooth right into the back of that truck in traffic. <laughs> no, you can brake hard. Okay. You can brake hard, but it, I, I like the regenerative braking was super okay. smooth. Mm. It's also the quietest car. I've I think had more had regenerative car. braking should be smooth. Like I'm still very surprised yeah. when like you even have the opportunity to let go and just slam forward if you're not used yeah. to I it. I mean, there's levels of smooth, but this one was extremely, especially in the last couple of miles an hour. Like, you yeah. know how you'll get to zero and yeah. sort of like jolt back? Yeah. This one never did that. It would just slow down to zero and you just That's nice. arrive. I love one pedal driving because your muscle memory like eventually knows how far you need to just let off the accelerator mm -hmm. before yeah. you'll just like stop right at the stoplight. It's a skill. It's so fun to just guess every time and you're always correct. Yeah. It's great. It's fire. Yeah. You guys rode in it. I liked that the vents for the air conditioning uh, were made out of either like a chrome plated brass or maybe some sort of like polished tin. But it's this nice semi heavy metal that when you flick, yeah. it goes ding. That's like, true. Like it a champagne nice flute. Sound. Yeah. Felt fancy. Felt really fancy. Yeah. Really nice. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing, and I couldn't figure out if I was going crazy or not until I got back and Googled the hell out of it. And I'm not going crazy. Mm hmm. The stars on the roof, occasionally they have a shooting star. Yes. What? The whole what? time we were yeah. driving in it, I was just staring at it like what I know I saw a shooting star. I know what? I saw it. So, oh, and then I Googled like it and apparently life. it's yeah. a shooting star. Yeah. I didn't so know that. Adam and I went, we were helping Miles shoot something in it. And at one point Adam just goes, while we were still parked, was that a shooting star? And we were like, <laughs> what? And he's like, I can't. I can't prove if that was real or not. <laughs> it's like when you see a meteor in <laughs> yeah. real life and you're like, oh, trust me. It happened. Whoa, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Did you guys know you can get uh, stars in the doors as well? There was stars on the doors in yeah. that one. Yeah, it was yeah, only yeah. 13000 extra dollars <laughs> to get them there. <laughs> hmm. How good is that? You I know, mean, <laughs> you're losing money if how you much don't get the stars paint? in the door. How much was the paint? Ten grand. The, the paint was also thirteen grand. Oh, my God. Sorry, just the purple part of the paint. The satin silver in the middle was ten grand more on top so of that. So the purple and the satin together was twenty three grand. More or less, yeah. You could get a Hyundai Elantra for that price. <laughs> Marquez, uh, you know, that's probably the second time you were powered by a Rolls-Royce power plant in the past few weeks. 
What do you mean? Because Rolls-Royce also makes the Trent engine option on the Boeing 777 that you often find yourself going to the West Coast on. That's a fantastic point, but I will push back. The Rolls-Royce Spectre is actually powered by essentially the BMW i7's electric powertrain. Ah! <laughs> so, so Rolls-Royce makes engines. Well, actually, <laughs> actually, the BMW i7's powertrain is powered by the Model oh, T. No, no, no. <laughs> but actually, though, it's a, it's the i7 has a pretty solid size battery and the dual motor setup and all. But the Rolls Royce is just putting a totally different chassis and body and suspension on mm. top of that, mm. and it's very Rolls Royce and very quiet and luxury. And it's got this decoupled anti roll bar tech where like one wheel mm. at a time goes through potholes and you never feel anything, and it's awesome. But it's an i7. Underneath. It only only weighs sixty five hundred pounds. <gasps> <laughs> Until this car has the CES Hyundai Ioniq 5 sideways crab uh, oh, tires, oh. I don't want it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's, but when it, and when I have $400,000. Yeah, but when it does, yeah. Yeah, which I don't. Yeah. Sorry, it was four hundred grand starting. We had a, like about one hundred twenty grand of options, so it was like five hundred. <laughs> you had three of my Foresters as <laughs> options. As options. <laughs> we had an i seven <laughs> options. I got okay. here a little late that day, and there was only one spot left right next to the Rolls Royce, and I had to reverse into it. That was terrible. I just scraped the concrete wall on the other side to make sure he didn't hit the. That's yeah. hilarious. Okay, we well, have one more headline, don't we? We have one more headline in the one more hat. Okay, I'm also pretty sure it's a. Uh, Headline in oh, it's quotes. A, it's a mini headline. Wait, is it mine or is it yours? It's yours. It's yours. Oh, because snake. It's just not a headline. It's just a thing we want to talk about. Yes, yeah. one in a says head. the OnePlus 12 and 12R. So oh. some may know that the OnePlus 12 slash 12R just launched very recently. That's it, it right there. He's there it is. It. I've seen this that the before. 12. <clears throat> That's the 12. Yep. <laughs> That's not the 11? <laughs> yeah. It looks, okay. It looks yeah. Well, like just checking. Just checking. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I, I, we've been testing, so I've had this phone for a week longer than I've had the S24 Ultra, and uh, we've also had the Find X7 uh, Ultra, and I just haven't gotten enough time to test all yeah. of them, but I wanted to at least mention this phone and talk about it briefly. Mm -hmm. Really good phone, um, and I think a lot of people will like it. When I reviewed the OnePlus 11, a lot of my, my uh, what's the word? Sentiment? Yes. Okay. Was, was You basically said it. I was just finished. I couldn't remember the <laughs> second letter. A lot of the sentiment was very much like OnePlus is back. They kind of strayed a little bit. They got rid of the alert slider. The software went kind of sideways. The Hasselblad thing was gone. They brought it all back. And so OnePlus 11 was a solid comeback and a good phone for them. This is very much an upgraded with a lot of 2024 special version of that phone. Yeah. It's got a better telephoto. It's got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And it's got that super bright, like 25, 2600 nits OLED that we're seeing so often. Right. So those things like really bring it into 2024. And it's still got all the rest of the stuff. It's still got the software, the alert slider, the Hasselblad camera, all that good stuff that you expect from the OnePlus phone. Yeah. So it's a really good phone. I haven't made a whole review of it because that's kind of where my observations end. And it didn't feel like it was a whole bunch. I have a lot to say about a different phone we're reviewing right now. So that'll be a video. But... I wanted to bring this out and at least have that in the hat because OnePlus 12 is a good phone. It is $800, which is a pretty good price for a yeah. phone like that. Um, they did sort of, they, they are still sort of using the Oppo UX UI, which I don't love. It's, and they merged like Oxygen OS to be, what was the other Color one called? Color OS. So they merged yeah. them together. They originally just changed it to be called Color OS. A lot of people got upset. And then what they kind of ended up doing was just on OnePlus phones, calling it Oxygen OS, but not changing the software at <laughs> it's all. It's just Color OS. So it's just Color OS. Is that just gaslighting? Yeah. <laughs> okay. kind of I think yeah. they were like, our community will shut up if we just call it Oxygen OS again. <laughs> nice. Which, if you remember, Oxygen OS only exists because of the Cyanogen debacle, which you should go watch our episode on, Cyanogen Mod and the Death of the Android ROM. Uh, your, oh, your calendar. 800 no, <laughs> there you go. But uh, yeah, so I don't know. Someone on Twitter put up a comparison between Oxygen OS and the Color OS that's on it because they flashed an, an old Oxygen OS ROM onto it. And I just feel like old OnePlus Oxygen OS had a much more cohesive like brand identity. Mm -hmm. A lot of the app, and I know that at the end of the day, a lot of this literally comes down to the app icons. And like the way that the overlay yes. of the quick settings menu looks and, you know, it's not That's that big of a deal. Me, the quick settings, the quick settings menu is one. a big thing. Yeah. Like, I want uh, you to, sorry, I yeah. don't want to interrupt. No, I, I want you to feel the haptics. Hold this phone and hit that clear button and just feel the haptics. 
Is that good or bad? I don't use that. <laughs> I don't use any app. Wait well, a minute. You Did you, it, it's like a. Oh, I thought like you a, were listening to Taylor Swift. Sorry. No, it was like a triple tap. Yeah, just, it was. It like. Can I? How do I? Yeah. <laughs> Here, I'll, do, I'll, I'll load up another notification. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, sorry. Really, it felt look, like it like shook up the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little shimmy. There little shimmy. Really? Yeah. It shimmies up the phone. It was pretty sick. I will say, looking at the phone from this angle, the one thing I noticed is that it does not look like an iPhone. Fact, it was. You said it got the all the 2024 other new things flat. other than flat That's edges. That's a great yeah. point. Yep. It yeah. did not flatten the edges. Um, okay. Here. So hit the clear notification button. Okay. Oh. Right? It's like very precise. Like, I love that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I felt it like it felt like it was in three distinct zones, like a cat yeah. purring. <laughs> Honestly, you could make ASMR out of good haptics on a smartphone. That's true. We should, should do record that. them. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Is it yeah. ASMR if you're feeling it and not hearing it? I'm sure there's another acronym. Do any of us know what ASMR means? <laughs> yes, a audio sensory rhythm. something meridian, meridian response. response. Yes. Yes. It's like a feeling you get in from, your brain. Yeah, it's scratching your brain. So the 12R is also coming out. That is $500. Comes with uh, last year's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 instead of the Gen 3. Okay. Um, so that's a pretty, I mean, that's a very good price. Yeah. It's a good deal. You know? Wow. So there you go. I wish we got the green one. The green one looks The green like, one like looks amazing. Green marbly type of thing. I never thought I would live in a world where Marquez sees the black version of something and says, I wish we had the green version. You I mean, were very anti green for a while. I feel like you're warming up to it. So it's not the green that's fascinating to me. It's the marbly pattern on oh, the one yeah. that happens to be green. Right. If there was a marbly pattern on this, I'd be into it. Mm, I like green. Yeah. It's like a camo type of like thing. Green. I do like the small little details, like the ring of the camera module has this little kerning that kind of looks like a lens i like that and mm. it has a little hasselblad logo next to it there so if you have seen the oppo find x7 ultra it has many many of the same features of the x7 ultra just with a little bit different body style but yeah. a lot of things are very similar the extremely bright display all of that kind of stuff yeah um, yeah optical so that's right a thing yeah that we've so there's the about. review <laughs> there you go i was just gonna say marquez We're i'm putting you on the spot are we getting a review of this thing or not? Nah? I don't, unless, I mean, we are about to be, spoiler, pretty busy. So <laughs> is, it's it's not likely that we'll be able to get to everything we want to just because of how busy we're about to get. But if if you must know, I do think this is a good phone. Like the purpose of the review is for people to be able to decide if it's good or if it's not good. This falls under good phone, which I think is a really good place to just be happy. That's yeah. a good phone. So yeah, one plus 12. Good yeah. looks. Cool. Good luck. Uh, good luck. Good luck. Oh, I good was luck. like, wow. Yeah, this good is luck. great. Good luck, everybody. Good, good luck. luck. <laughs> okay, that's right. it for our headlines, which means that we means can... The hat is empty. The hat is empty, and we can take out the whiteboards because it's time for tr 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 trivia. Trivia, dude. Trivia, dude. So, quick update on the score. Marquez with 21. Andrew with 16. David with 20. Oh, I got to keep you on your toes. First question. <laughs> Who carried the one? Don't I was going to say, about it. someone in my studio video commented, just <laughs> carry the one. And I was like, come on, man. Give me just this. <laughs> nice. they, were like, they were like, carry the one gang. And I was like, I feel oh, like yeah. it's a movement. <laughs> I feel like that's just like a secret code that shows that you listen to Waveform. It it's kind of like know. the it's old like a wink wink thing. Or the, um, the, the narwhal eats waffles at breakfast oh, or whatever it was. I thought it was like the narwhal symbol on your head. No, the there was like, there was this, in the early <laughs> days of Reddit, Imagine. there was like a secret phrase that you would say to people in public to see oh. if they were Redditors. Oh, that's And now you just uncool. lie about using Reddit <laughs> yeah. instead. Oh my yeah. God. It if is I, incredibly I uncool. think if I remember correctly, it's, when does the narwhal bacon? Yeah. Yes. At midnight. Oh, yeah. And then everyone around you looks at you and goes like, oof, this is the last time we're invited. <laughs> <laughs> what did he just say? What did you say? Yeah. Found the Redditor. <laughs> anyway, first question. Yeah, 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 yeah. USB OTG. What does the OTG stand for? Not to be confused with ODB, legendary rapper. David, don't look so confused. <laughs> <laughs> I always look confused. I may or may not have pressed the button twice, so <laughs> oh, it's yeah. a little longer now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you press it again? No. <laughs> no. 
polite to you. <laughs> I'm so wrong. Me too. I only, and flip him and read. I'm hoping I got the one. <laughs> I can't even think of it. Yeah. <laughs> I oh lost. All right, Jess. Okay. Yours looks like the digital <laughs> raid from the Matrix. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Hear me out. I wrote down all the ones I think I know. USB OTG. USB is universal serial bus. That's correct. Does he get a point for each You don't get a point for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the and OTG. OTG stands for something transfer something. <sighs> nope. Universal. I just wrote over the. Bro, over the. Call. Over the what? Goo. Over no. the hedge. <laughs> <laughs> over the hedge. They claimed 2007 <laughs> thriller. Um, <laughs> I put over the gateway. Yeah. No. I think we both did over the. I, the is probably not. I also wrote over, but I didn't write the. Oh. Because David probably... accepted you with over the garden wall. That's true. It's actually on the go. Oh, I knew that. Oh. USB on the I go. I knew that. Yeah. Mm. I it didn't was get like any. The... You guys was... both got the. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's true. Do we get a point? No, you... no, we clarified <laughs> I that. I said no already. <laughs> Wouldn't you guys feel stupid if I had given you a point for the? <laughs> I'll take no, I, I would get, take baby. it. If it carry the one. Why, why? What is USB on the go? So why it was the first. Okay. I think. It was like the first version of USB that was an, the the first like additional version of USB that was announced after the original USB protocol, right? That I don't know. It but according like, to Wikipedia, it was a specification first used in late 2001 that allows USB devices such as tablets or smartphones to also act as a host, yeah. allowing other USB devices right. such as flash drives, digital cameras, oh. and a keyboard to be attached to them. Yes, okay. Hmm. This is a big thing because it's like transfer devices at the time, like the iPod and that kind of stuff, they were like, well, these are just portable computers, so like, why don't we just allow you to store things on, on portable devices? As opposed to like only your computer at home can store mm. your stuff. Why don't we allow your like iPod or I don't know whatever de MP3 player device you have to just like have stuff on it, so you can bring it to another computer and, and be the host of over. it, and move it to that. Yeah. Okay. Question was, number two: <laughs> The world of storage mediums is a world full of acronyms. We're familiar with the hits. ROM and RAM, but what is the acronym for storage that, once it is written by a user, cannot be rewritten? I got this. Whoa. That's a sharp heel turn from the before. confidence. Where you were like, I definitely don't got this. <laughs> USB <laughs> over the hedge. Oh. Let's see what you got. Uh, All right, so mine is S T O I I W B A U C N B R W. So storage that once <laughs> it oh is Oh my over. God. Wow. Andrew. We're going to discuss that Good answer try. later. <laughs> okay. Storage that once I wrote it is written. WOM. Right only memory. So close. Really? But wrong. I wrote ROM, read only memory. Also very close. It sounds but like wrong. you're just saying that in baby talk. I, I'm going <laughs> to zoom in on David right now, his face, because I want you guys to see his reaction when Ellis tells him what it is. <laughs> Stop. The answer is worm. <laughs> right once, read many. Right once. Oh, that was so awesome. Unfortunate. That's that's. <laughs> I'm so glad that we didn't get that right and got that moment. Wait, guys, that's better than getting it right. I markers down. It's like how much of a space there is here for you, but it's the wrong I space. Read that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Worm. There is um. Right there ones is, read many. So there is a running joke in the tech community that is WOM, write only memory, because the idea that you could write unreadable memory sort of like <laughs> like is it even memory at that point, you know? That's um, well, that's a great point. I didn't even yeah. think of that. No, but it is I think there's actually a Wikipedia page that is write only memory mm. and then in parentheses joke. <laughs> nice. It's kinda like the um over avian carrier. Yeah, it's kind I, of like IP the, re over avian the request for comment for IP over avian care. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Care. Wow. wow. Womp. That was Wom. weird. Wombo. Wom. Wombo. When's the last time we got a trivia question right? <laughs> last <laughs> Andrew, you. you. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you know. I forgot about that. 
<laughs> it's not about the questions you get right. It's about the learning experience. The friends okay, you make but, along the way. I, I want to ask a question. Do I get an addition, a bonus point because when I turn it upside down, it says the same thing? Let's discuss. No, the space is in a different spot. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. And with that, we'll wrap up Waveform for the week. Thanks for uh, joining us for uh, Headlines in a Hat. If you have any other uh, headlines you'd like us to react to, drop them in the comments. Maybe we'll put them in a hat next week. Or maybe we'll just be incredibly busy and have other things to talk about. <laughs> we'll see. More likely. We'll see. One or the other might happen. But in either case, uh, thanks for subscribing and for watching. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye. Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rogan. We're partnered with the Vox Media Podcast Network, and our intro music was created by Vane Silk. I really want to get a magic conch shell that I can just like. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs>